Hi there, welcome to Live from the Lesson Studio tonight. Uh, today we're taking a look at one of my favorite things to do, this really simple, easy way to jam with a pentatonic scale, uh, the major pentatonic scale. So, I've kind of loved like Lenny my entire life. Kind of like a SRV. Jam, and then I also kind of like Whenever Yellow Ledbetter came out by uh, Pearl Jam, it's kind of the same chord progression. This kind of thing. And I always thought that was really cool, so we're going to take a look at how you can jam on that. I'm using my Fractal Audio FM9. Uh, it's kind of the axe effects on the floor. I've got a Fender Tweed Amp as this background part, like here. And then for the lead guitar part, I'm using um, the Fender Bassman, a 65 Bassman, which I think might be the best sounding Fender amp of all time. It sounds really quacky. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing some chords that are all in the key of E major, and I'm playing the major pentatonic scale over top of it. But you don't treat it the same way as you would treat a minor pentatonic scale. It's treated slightly differently. Here's the chords I'm playing. It's an E chord, right? So that's very simple. And then I'm going to a B chord next, which is the five chord in the key of E. And then I'm playing A next, which is the four chord in the key of E, and back to E. So basically it's one, two, a three, and a four, E and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four, E and a one, and a two, a three and a four E and a one and a two a three and a four E and a and then I did it again a lot of breaks too like a wop gaka pakita do 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 and two do 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 I played C sharp minor which is the relative minor to E and then this progression I went down to B five chord and then I played F sharp minor which is the two chord and back to B again. It's really simple uh, by design. It's really a kind of a simple progression. Not trying to be too fanciful here. Um, so when you do this you can combine this with the major pentatonic scale. Let's talk about the chords for a little bit first. What you might want to do with these chords, right? So maybe your first objective would be to try to learn how to play this through the caged system. Now, I talk about this all the time. I know, I know, we're going to study again. We're going to talk about work. There's always stuff to learn, and we want to kind of uh, work a little bit and then play a little bit. Like, learn something new and then play with what you learn and learn something else and play with what you learn and sort of grow and build that way where you're learning something and then you're playing with it. You're learning something you're playing with it. So if I look at this E chord, right? If I play E here and then B here, a here and then E here. Now the problem with these uh, cage forms is they're going to overlap a little bit. We can't really find a B unless we do B7. We can't play a B in the first position. So I'm going to have to go out of position for the, for the B chord. I can do this one. Back to the one chord again. And I got E here. See I'm doing the inversions of cage. This is the E form. After the E form is the D form. Then the C form. A form. G form, E form. If you don't know the caged scale or the caged chords yet, take a look at this playlist on the channel right here, which will show you a whole, whole bunch of stuff about cage in this uh, particular video I'm making right now. We'll get uh, thrown into the playlist as well. It's uh, kind of procedural. It'll take you through the caged system from the very beginning so you can understand what I'm doing here. I'm playing through these chords, but see, what's cool about this is caged spells caged as you go up the neck. We're starting on the E, so the next, uh, if you're joining me just now, I'm, I'm doing a very simple jam on how to play major pentatonic, uh, kind of put together with these really simple chords that kind of sound like Yellow Ledbetter from Pearl Jam, or almost like Lenny from uh, Steve Ray Vaughan, and we're going to make it really simple. So you can jam on this right now. Get your looper out or play without your looper too. We'll kind of talk about that as well. So if I look at my E form, the next one in line is a D because it spells cage. Then I have a C form, an A form. Let's see what the next uh, this comment says. Let's go by quickly. Caged, good topic. I've been practicing in basics, good topic. Okay, so 
check it out. Uh, so if E here, the next one is the D form. Then I have a C form, an A form, and a G form. See, it's spelling cage. Now, if I look at my A chords, the closest one to the end where the nut is is A. So the next one's going to be what? C, A, G, G. And then C, A, G, E, and then D, and then A, and then C, right? Same thing with B. The B is an A form. This is an A form of B. A, the next one's going to be G because I'm falling caged. Here's E and here's D. So what I want to do is be able to play these. Now I, get, I have to go out of position for the B chord a little bit because it's uh, there is not a B chord in the first position. So I'm kind of doing this as like a little nursery around here. The E's here. This might take you a week to do this, but it's so worth the effort because it'll help you to kind of grow through Caged. I'm moving up the cage forms. I'm going to share this one again. Now, there's different string groupings for cage, too. If you go on the channel, there's a lesson about the cage string groupings. So you can kind of mix and match. You don't want to play all six strings necessarily. That's why we have a capo, right? If I'm playing like a... I'm not going to play that without a capo. That would be kind of silly and painful. But if I'm a second guitar player or if I'm playing in a situation where there's bass and drums or keyboards, there's lots of stuff going on, I don't necessarily want to play all the strings all the time, right? So I can break these into smaller string groupings. Now you're probably wondering, why are we doing string groupings of four strings? Well, it's because triads have three strings, but we're leading up to the doing seventh chords. So when you follow my system, you'll see it's four strings but uh, ultimately the cage chords are three strings. So I'm kind of doing redundancy built into these uh, forms so that eventually you can do these with seventh chords as well. There's a lesson on the channel right here which will walk you through fundamental forms of these seventh chords and be able to play a blues at the seventh chords. That's a really fun thing to do. So now what I'm doing is I'm getting back to my jam again. I'm gonna go E. Comment says, I want to get to these comments when they come in. Here comes the stuff. Wants to play without a capo. Yeah, it's really, really hard to play without a capo. Let's see. I actually had to kind of put my fingers out of position. I never do this. Like. I could do this like I could, I was thinking I could go like this. That's oh, hard. It's not supposed to do that. Yeah, you definitely need the cable for that. So here we go. E. Now what I want to try to do is as I'm playing these chords, I want to try to infuse some really simple major pentatonic riffs. So when I was uh, first starting to, to play, I didn't understand the difference between major and minor. And this is a really fundamental thing, like a major chord is a major third, a minor chord is a minor third. So I'd find myself playing over songs where you had like a major progression, right? But then I would hear this going on, if you play this over top of it, doesn't sound so good to play minor over major. It could be good occasionally as a little aside, like uh, on Lenny. For a second, Stevie goes. To try to do something kind of extra and funky and weird, but you don't want to play the entire solo that way. I was just doing uh, Judy Blue Eyes with a student today, uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and Steve Stills kind of jams on the entire major progression in minor. I'm like, ugh. Just want to shift them down. So what you do, and there's a lesson on the channel right here, which we'll go into this and illustrate this. E minor starts with your first finger on the E note, but E major starts with your little finger on the E note. So all you have to do is play minor, you play here. For major, put your little finger there instead and do my girl. That's how you know you're doing the right notes. 
So over these chords, if I'm playing E, what I'm going to do is be my own capo, or my own looper. So, my own capo. So here we go. I've got this thing going. I've got my groove going. Wherever you can play the chords, even if they're just kind of basic like that. Now I'm going to kind of throw some licks in too. Trying to keep this as basic as I can right now and not get too fanciful. E. Now, what you can do first, if you can't quite do that, uh, that was I, I kind of made that simple. Maybe do like uh, the measures uh, kind of evenly where the rhythms are. One, two, riff. One, two, riff. Two, riff. So I'm doing E. Let me see what the comment says. Um, yeah, well, thank you. Um, he, the, I just was, he was talking about uh, the different forms of chords and, and the style of guitar that I play. Um, I've been reaching for sounds for a really long time. And it's kind of a combination of a lot of things. Like I'll learn songs and pick up chords that way. A lot of the stuff I learned from doing jazz chord melodies. I was a jazz guitar major in college and we used to have to do these juries where we play the guitar in front of the guitar faculty. And every semester I had to learn like 12 really hard pieces of music. And back then it wasn't tablature. You had to read the chords and I had to figure out the chords myself just by looking at them and making sense of them. I'd spend like six hours staring at a page. So now when I teach lessons, um, I have all, lots of chord melody stuff here. If you go on the lesson channel, you'll see there's chord melodies. I think there's uh, the national um, the national anthems on there. I think I did a couple Christmas tunes on there already. A Joe DiOrio piece. I could do more. The jazz chord melodies are great for learning chords. And then also sort of experimenting with different forms. So it, as you start to learn, uh, if you watch the videos, you'll see the methodology it starts with caged, right? Uh, and then I go into six, add nine, six, and sus chords and then sort of extensions beyond that. Uh, when you add the seventh in, then you have seventh, ninth, eleventh chords, and then you can start to get into flat nine, sharp uh, f five, flat nine, sharp five, kind of things like the alt chords. But basically with major uh, or minor chords, you, you can do some really neat stuff where you start to uh, spread the chords out, not necessarily physically spread them out, but every time I learn something new, I try to, um, try to infuse it into what I do. So I'll, I do this all the time. The idea is to, um, to work on satisfaction before gratification. So kind of dinner before dessert, like I'll learn something and then I'll, I'll take that idea and try to incorporate it into my thing. And then I'll hear something else that sparks my ear and I'll keep trying to incorporate these things in. And it takes some time. But over the course of time, your palate kind of grows and you have more options. Like I had heard that uh, Getty Lee from Rush, Alex had said that he was uh, unfortunately kind of forced to have 99 ideas um, yeah, for sure. Dinner before dessert, 100%. Like, what, what, if I'm playing guitar and I'm having too much fun, I know I'm not doing any work, right? So I kind of try to minimize that. I try to get something accomplished first. And then whatever it is that I learn, whether it's like, you know, learning Bach pieces or whatever, it comes back out and you're playing later if you do a little bit of work and just kind of push the needle a little bit or push the push it down the can down the road a little bit further and then mess around and play so like uh, Al, uh alex was saying that getty would have like the, be the guy with 99 ideas before he chooses one and that's kind of my problem too when i'm recording is i have 99 ideas before one sticks but it's better to have 99 ideas than to have no ideas because you haven't done enough experimenting to have all those ideas to choose from if that makes sense so the more you do this the more kind of stuff you can learn how to grab, but basically with these E major ideas, I said this in the last E major video, I'm kind of doing what I call little winging, little winging. So if I, if I go do, re, mi, fa, sol, I can do that through all the chords. So I just kind of went like, I can go like a, That was all an E chord. Everything I just did there was an E chord. Nothing really kind of besides E, but I'm moving. 
those notes through the chords. I can do that with the bass line too. Or I could do that with a tenor voice too. I could do like, or the alto voice. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Motif Music Studios. If you want to hear some great piano music, uh, check out Motif Music Studios. Um, it's beautiful piano playing. You can just go to the channel and um, when you're driving your car or uh, your tractor, because I'm wearing this sort of Yellowstone shirt right now. Uh, yeah, expanding upon the chords is such a big deal. And it's, it's really not that hard to do. So if you look at like bass tenor alto soprano, I got that bass line going. I got the tenor line going. So I could do like, I could do the alto line. And the soprano voice. And I can mix and match that. So I got all those going at the same time. I've never played that before. My, see, my ear, my ear kind of led me to that chord. I didn't know I even did there, but that was really neat. I did this, did this, and I reached for this G sharp note here. Wow. So now I've just done something I've never done before, and that will be kind of like incorporated into my thing. So when I was younger, I used to stop and think about what I just did, and I would take some time and maybe even write it down. I don't do that now because I figure that if I did it once, I'm going to come back around to it again. So I sort of like try to mem remember what I did while I'm still moving so I can keep going forward. So now here's our jam. We have this going on first, E and B, A. do is I want to be able to keep the, the pentatonic scale going too. So simplifying this, it's going one, two, riff. One, two, riff. One, two, riff. One, two, riff. And on the risk, I try to do call and response. One, two, riff. Riff. If you're not able to do the cage system through all these positions, you can jump around horizontally if you need to to play those chords. These go by really fast. Very common, but uh, it's a very common chord progression. Sure, it's one, five, four, one. But if you do a little bit of changing of the, the way the notes are organized, you can make it really beautiful too. You don't have to like just stick with that. Like for example, if I play the sus chord. Suspended, and I can go. That was nice. So now here I'm going to go one, two. Simple chord progression can be changed into a piece of art. But here's the deal though, when you're writing music, this is the way it's done, right? So if I wanted to write a tune and I wanted to make a melody, with a, right now I'm playing Ionian. It's just straight major, everything is major. In fact, uh, I kind of like that song a lot on Bold Horizon. I always talk about Bold Horizon, uh, my most recent album. 
Um, three out of here. I'll grab it. Let's reach this here. Little shameless plug here. Bold Horizon. There it is. Uh, the most recent um, like uh, record I made. Three out of ten songs are E major. I love playing an E major. I've always liked that. Now the problem with E major is you get these two strings that aren't going to agree, right? D and G need to be D sharp and G sharp to be an E. So the problem is it's a little bit out. It's uh, the guitar's homogeneously like a organically an E minor 11 chord. So G works much better with the open strings. But if you can avoid those two open strings, then you can create music, right? So if I want to create a melody. There you go. There's a tune now. So you'd like a like a There it is. So I can decide which chord I want to attach to each note. I could do it all in the one chord. Frere Jaca. It's like almost Frere Jaca Dormi Vu. So that's kind of cool. Do it down with six like that instead. Falling slowly. Isn't it amazing how many of these songs are so similar, right? I mean, there's so much of these melodies. I was just doing uh, Top Gun the entire day today. I'm going to do a video on actually on Top Gun on the regular channel, so I don't want to give this away, but I was doing. It's all in D, right? It sounds exactly like Canon in D. It also sounds like so many other D songs. To me, D is green. It's kind of a green color. I don't know if you see colors. E is kind of like clay. E, the e, e key of E sounds like the earth to me. It sounds like the earth. It sounds like uh, Arizona ground or something. So this major pentatonic idea, let's another comment real quick here. Oh, you did, you did it in C? She, um, the, the Motif Music Studios, check out, check out, uh, the uh, Top Gun theme in C, Motif Music Studios. Just go subscribe to Motif Music Studios. You won't be sorry. There's some beautiful piano music there to listen to, and uh, it's a great to listen to at the end of a long day. Uh, sometimes I get tired of hearing the guitar timbre, and I want to hear something different. So, uh, well, you're welcome. Um, so check it out. So what I want to do then is I want to jam to and in a riff. Maybe down to this chord here. Back to the jam again here. Now we have to treat the major pentatonic scale differently than the regular minor pentatonic scale. I call this click and drag. So what you want to do um, is you're going to create a lot of double stops, a lot of harmony parts. Two notes are played together. Uh, Jordan, subscribe to Motif Music Studios. You won't be sorry. It's really, really, really awesome. Um, so check it out. If I do this, I can click and drag. There's two notes together, two notes together. So I can go like, I'm creating these little chordlets. I guess they're like chordlets or dyads, but there's really not a lot of, there's not a lot of, uh, theory necessarily involved, as long as you're in the right environment, it doesn't matter what notes you play, they all work together. You can create like a little music box sound like that if you play out of that shape. So if I do like, if I go like a... See, I'm just going... What I'm doing there is I'm bending up to the next pitch. Kind of sounds cool. If you do it with harmonics, it's even better if I go. Kind of sounds like a koto or something, like a Japanese instrument.
<laughs> That's cool sounding. So anyways, what I'm going to do is you're going to click and drag like this. See, I'm creating a double stop. There's a minor third from the major, from the perfect fourth. And I can add this second here. And all these notes are diatonic. If I go do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, I can go do, re, mi. I'm doing a, an add nine there. And there's a sus there. So I'm kind of creating these like add nine, six, and sus chords right through the middle of the thing. So if I go like, it's kind of my happy place almost. disappear really fast here. Blackbird on piano. Jordan does have a channel. He's a Beatles uh, affectionata. We're talking Blackbird here. So anyways, check it out. If I do this, and I play the chords, I can jam now. And if I can move the cage system even better, play the E here, play the A here, the B here, move around like this. Here's E. Here's B. The idea though is you have to keep the groove going, right? So now we're gonna go like, Notice I haven't played one single major scale idea. The two or three live videos again ago, I was doing a lot of Ionian stuff and it's fused with this. I'm not doing anything major at all. I'm just playing major pentatonic and boy, is that a great sound. So if I play a little backing track I made, right? Now I can try to treat this a little bit more like single notes and a little less like click and drag. So if I go like this, do octaves but I just did right there uh, if you don't know how to do that I just did something called a hemiola I was playing three against two. It's called a polyrhythm. It's really easy to get started with polyrhythms if you do it with a slower beat like that. Like if you try to put a five or a seven gripping in, it's hard. But basically, I don't know where to do this. I'm playing eighth notes in one side and triplets in the other. Like, so if you can do a poly, uh, with triplet in one hand and an eighth note in the other hand, like that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. So when I went like this, I went like. So back to the Beatles, Jordan, if I go like... That's a hemiola. Chippa, la, ta, ta, kum, ba, ka, ta, ka, ka. It's three beats over two. 
and I'm doing that while I'm soloing as well. And that way, uh, it's kind of like keep playing over top of that beat. So if I I'll do that again with single notes this time. So now I'm doing it without playing the chords myself, but as a solo. So now it's just a B chord, and I did an A chord next with the open high E string and B string, back to E again. Now it's C-sharp minor chord. It's doing different voicings, B. This is F-sharp minor to, to B7. I'll kind of combine some chords too, like... Uh,
I tried that entire time to avoid playing any major scales. I didn't play any major scales at all. I just played major pentatonic and a bunch of chords and put it all together into that little sauce, right? What I'm doing though is I'm playing in an environment. Thank you. You know, it's interesting. I'm trying to treat the guitar like a piano. So I know that piano has more going on harmonically because you have seven and a half octaves and you can play stuff down here and you could do like stride piano and you can walk the bass lines and all that stuff. It's a little harder with guitar because you have a 17th from this A note to this C sharp note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So it's as far as you can go. So you can't go the entire way to get all that stuff going on. But you can do a lot with a guitar. It's a little limited compared to the piano, but um, it's really cool within the confines of what it is. So, it's, but the span of the guitar is that, but there's four octaves this way. And if I play harmonics like this, if I go like, uh, so if I did, I can get another octave up here. Someday I'll have to get into a discussion about guitar and piano. We could have a, we should call each other and just chat about it. Um, there's so many things about guitar that are different than piano because piano means uh, soft. It used to be called the piano forte. Now it's just piano, so it's not loud anymore. But with the guitar, you have all the timbre nuances, right? So that's because there's an entire billion, trillion dollar industry based on timbre, changing the tone not just the volume, right? So that's where all the pickups come in and the switches and the pedals and the amp choices and where you pick with the strings and what techniques you use and every last nuance goes into changing the timbre. And another thing about guitar too is your fingers are on the fretboard. So the vibrato, it's very personal. Like nobody does that the same, you know, this kind of, working my entire life on making some much emotion as I can out of those notes. So that's kind of where the guitar shines. It's not as good as far as the polyphonic aspect compositionally. There's definitely limitations and it's really hard to do chord melody on guitar. Whereas on piano, it's organically like natural to go left, right, organize, get your brain functioning. Try to get a guitar player to play something with two parts at the same time and your brain is going to break. So um, like Chet Atkins does something called Yankee Doodle Dixie where he plays Dixie and Yankee Doodle at the same time. Now, on piano, that probably sounds pretty trite, right? But on guitar, that's really hard to do. So I'm always trying to work on trying to incorporate whether it's writing or playing or chord melody and getting multiple voices moving in multiple directions to try my best to emulate what a piano and or a harpsichord, the predecessor of the piano, had that kind of built in, it's baked into the cake. That's why the composers wrote all that music on the harpsichord because the entire orchestra was there. The whole orchestra is on the harpsichord. You want to send a particular timbre to the French horns or the bassoon or to the oboe. That's kind of where the different uh, sounds that the, the 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 brass woodwind, the uh, the percussion and the strings would be where they sent those parts for the bass tenor alto soprano. So the four part writing was definitely present, but they were sending it to different timbre, much like I'm changing pickups or changing pedals or changing guitars for that matter when I when I'm recording to try to get a different timbre. The way the composer would get a different timbre with different parts of the orchestra It was all written on the harpsichord, which has the same basic tonality tone, I should say same same tone, timbre, but you could, you could uh, dedicate something to a flute because you heard that in your ear. You could dedicate it to strings and then you could take the string section like a branch then you could have viola doing something and, and, the, and, the, and the violin doing something and they're sort of interchanging. At the same time, you have two brass instruments in the same register and two, uh, two woodwind instruments in the same register. Now you have an orchestra and that's what guitar can do. Even this guitar has 24 different sounds on it, and the Fractal FM9 Axe effects on the floor I have, I have 32 amps dialed in, and different distortion pedals and different modulation effects on top of that. So picture the palette 
of different tonal possibilities. And you have to get used to them and know how they work. And once you can do that, you can dial in so many different timbres. And that's where the guitar really shines. The hands-on approach of your fingers for your own personal sound, and then the timbre differences. The, the piano kicks the guitar's butt when it comes to orchestration and to the ability to play uh, a polyphonic instrument. It is better in that sense. But anyways, that's my that's enough of my discussion of piano and guitar. I think about these things way too much. But um, anyways, I got to run. My battery is going to die on my iPad, and, uh, and I've got to go home. So thank you so much for hanging out. If you haven't subscribed already, please do subscribe to the channel. I make videos all of the time. Uh, go to you know, the Drew Bentley lesson channel on the other side here from the live channel. And I look forward to seeing you over there. Please leave comments in the comment section if you have any videos you'd like me to do, any songs you'd like me to teach. I'm trying to get super motivated here. I plan on having a, a, an absolute ton of content coming out. I'm super excited about YouTube and I'm gonna I'm just gonna bust my butt and see how much stuff I can get up there under the, under the channel, under the stratosphere of YouTube. So thank you so much. We'll see you next time.